Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, July 24, 2024 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, we do have another wave of attacks against dealing in network accessible storage or NAS devices. This is for a vulnerability that was originally found and made public in April. This is the third just such wave that we had, including the first one just as the vulnerability became public. It looks like the purpose of these scans is just to build a list of vulnerable devices. The exploit string is somewhat obfuscated, likely to bypass some parameter controls and then just executes a simple echo command that should result in an error message that probably is being used to detect if a device is first of all vulnerable and second of all is not a honeypot. And the obfuscation may have also been added in order to find devices that were not actually found by the earlier, more simple exploits that may have then been blocked by various perimeter solutions. And ESET security found the interesting security vulnerability in Telegram being exploited. This vulnerability makes APK files on Android phones appear as videos and tricks users into installing the APK. When you receive such a video in Telegram and click it to play it, it will inform you that it needs a third party video player, which then triggers the install. Now, there are plenty of warnings also. Android will warn you that you must give Telegram the ability to install applications in order to execute this code. But overall, it's plausible enough where probably users will fall for it. This vulnerability has been exploited since early June. Telegram fixed an update on July 11th. And ESET waited until yesterday to release details to give users time to update. And a security researcher from Accenture did publish details regarding a weakness in Microsoft's Hello for Business. This is a more manageable sort of enterprise version of Microsoft Windows Hello, and it was susceptible to a downgrade attack. Windows Hello for Business is supposed to be phishing resistant, at least it can be configured as such, but due to this weakness, it was possible for someone who is able to intercept the traffic to downgrade the requests and essentially downgrade to a non-phishing resistant authentication scheme. This problem was addressed by Microsoft in March, but we haven't seen any details about this loophole until now. And Let's Encrypt announced that they will discontinue support for OCSP, the online certificate status protocol, as soon as possible. Now, while it says here as soon as possible, it doesn't mean it'll happen tomorrow. The background here, and I talked about this in a prior podcast, is that OCSP is no longer required for public certificate authorities. Only certificate revocation lists are initially actually Let's Encrypt only supported OCSP and then later added certificate revocation lists as they became required. But essentially, they don't want to support both OCSP and CRLs, so they go with the one thing that's actually required. Now, when they're saying as soon as possible, the one hurdle for them to shut it down is that currently the Microsoft root program still requires OCSP, but they are thinking that Microsoft will discontinue this requirement and uh, fall in line with uh, the overall set of authority infrastructure sometime within the next year. So if you're using OCSP for your own internal purposes, probably time to consider discontinuing relying on OCSP and switch to certificate revocation lists instead. 
OCSP was sort of one of those great ideas uh, to make certificate revocation more robust and faster. It hasn't really worked out that way. And uh, with uh, the sort of combined certificate revocation lists being available now, this makes certificate revocation lists actually a little bit easier to manage. And Google is backtracking some earlier promises that they are going to eliminate third party cookies from Google Chrome. So an interesting wording that they're using here that in light of this, as they are saying, we are proposing an updated approach that elevates user choice. Instead of deprecating third party cookies, we would introduce a new experience in Chrome that lets people make an informed choice that applies across their web browsing. So essentially, what they're proposing is a more sort of opt out approach. This, as they're saying, is the result of some of the tests they conducted with their new privacy sandbox API. And they say implementing this in web applications would just take too much work, too much time. So they're holding on to third party cookies for now. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks to everybody who is liking and recommending this podcast and also to those of you who are leaving good reviews on various podcast platforms. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.